me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out here hollering my name when last year I spent more money on spilt liquor in bars from one side of this world to the other than you made. You're talking to the Rolex wearing diamond ring wearing kiss stealing whoo, wheel and dealing limousine like jet flying son of a gun and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down whoo to all husbands with the same interest good evening everyone good evening and welcome to the special edition of the walker ac experience for july 29th going into july 30th in the year 2022 i am your host walker ac otherwise known to you as my friends yes you are my friends i am otherwise known as adrian thank you for tuning in downloading everything in between for this particular podcast um, and greetings to our fans in the UK and our fans in India. Who would have thought we have fans all over the world, like I mentioned before, but we like to thank you as well. Of course, you can find these and other shows under walkerac76.podbean.com. And of course, you can write us at slacking majestically one yahoocom And of course, show some love for our merchandise here at The Experience under Cafe Press dot com forward slash w a c e and of course the cafe cannot be possible without a special thank you to cantina piper you can find her on one u dot talk show that's one the alphabet u dot talk show you can find her and her work she does tremendous work on the design of the show and of course also stephanie perez she helps us out with the design also, so a special thank you to them because once again, without them, there is no Cafe Press, there is no Walker AC Experience merchandise, and we kick off the show with an, a bit of an apology. I don't like to apologize much for a couple of things because the things I do, I do intentionally, so I apologize for them, but I figure I owe you guys an apology because last week, and which I rarely do, I kind of phoned it in last week. I wasn't feeling very well. And of course, Saturdays are my very extra special busy days at work. So when I come home, I rest, I do a couple of things. And instead of devoting my time to the show, I let my outside work get the best of me. So by the time at the end of the night comes around, I find myself scrambling to put something together. And of course, I pride myself on putting a show together, spur of the moment, I hit record, and I start, and that's where the show takes me. And... Fortunately, you guys really love that. You guys really adore what I do. But last week was kind of a letdown. It's kind of a bummer because I didn't put my whole heart and soul into it. And for that, I apologize. Now, instead of coming in and preaching like I always do, because I know eventually the positivity gets kind of sickening and I don't want to, you know, constantly shove that down your throats because we're all adults here and we all understand how things work. We all understand how life works. And however you choose to see life as your own business, of course, I want the best for everyone. I want everyone to win. Even the people that don't like me, which there are quite a bit, a lot of you out there, I still want you to persevere and win. No matter what our past entails, no matter what how you see me or anything of the sort, I want everybody to go to the grave knowing that they've done a tremendous thing. And of course, as you've noticed on my podcast with the experience or with... Um, the root of all Ashley, I'm very silly, I'm very just kind of nonchalant, and I use a whole lot of self-deprecating humor. Now, for those of you who don't know, you know, self-deprecating is I, I, I kind of poke fun at myself. And with me, I do a whole lot of self-deprecating humor because, you know, for the longest time, I was very insecure about who I am and what I represented. And a little brief definition of self-deprecation is the act of reprimanding oneself by belittling, belittling, undervaluing, and disparaging oneself, or being excessively modest. Now, for the past four years, I've been very modest about my show. And people have always told me, be proud of your show. Brag about your show. And I never did. I never wanted to brag about a show that I've done on accident. A show that was never meant to be. Something that I never thought I would do. For those of you who are uninitiated, 
I grew up with a really bad stutter. Now, where the stutter came from, who knows, but it was a mixture between insecurity, you know, being fearful, and just not having an all-around self-awareness of myself at a very young age. So, I had a hard time expressing myself. My mind would get ahead of me, and that would formulate into me stuttering and not getting things out. And I've had a hard time with that for many, many years. I still have a hard time with it to this day. You know, you may listen to some of my shows and hear me say um and er a lot. And maybe start to stutter when I get really excited because I trip over myself. My brain thinks ahead of me and it won't catch up to my mouth, in other words. So I trip over my words. So I've always took the negatives about me, you know, the glasses, my afro, my certain vernacular that I have, and me mumbling through certain things. I wanted to pick on myself before anybody else did. So, at a very young age, people found that to be humorous because they didn't have the opportunity to poke fun at me and call me four eyes and afro and or the stinky kid or the poor kid. I've always turned it around on myself to cushion the blow. And instead of learning from that, instead of having that self-love within me to get past that, I took it into my 20s, into my 30s, even into my 40s. I pick on myself. I use that self-deprecating humor just to deal with the inner demons that I have, the inner insecurities that I have that I cannot face that I still can't face to this day. So I mask it under humor. So with the art of self-deprecating, I find that a lot of insecure people do that. And I will never ever call those people out for doing that because I'm one of them. I'm the main person that will self-deprecate myself to the nth degree. Now, of course, it's been said that people love confidence. In the workplace, you love confidence. Relationships, you love confidence. And that's something I've always lacked, starting out with relationships. Because in my relationships, I always wanted to please the other person to the nth degree. I always wanted to go above and beyond and try to make that person feel you know, special and wanted above myself. Because to me, the secret to relationships is having that balance of love and, adver- and love and admiration. Of course, you have you know the king and queen. You have the president and the vice president. But you have to have that confidence to survive a relationship, to thrive in a relationship. And that's one of the things I never really had for the longest time. And that was always one of the things I was so fearful of nowadays in getting into a relationship is having that self-confidence, you know, to take the lead and to be the person I should be. But back then, I always leaned on the humor, I always leaned on the self-deprecating. Well, you know, when my former would say, you look tremendous, I would say, oh, no, I don't. I'm looking horrible. Oh, you need a new pair of glasses. Just something of the sort instead of saying thank you. I used to always do this. And it would always be the utmost failure of my relationships or friendships because I never took the time to really acknowledge the compliments that were heartfelt, that were given to me. And I should have said thank you instead of rolling back to the little kid inside of me that was afraid to see the good parts of me. Because, of course, when you're young, bullying was was the thing. Whether it be in grade school, elementary, or even high school, bullying. And I'm going to say this, and some of you may not agree with me, but bullying is a necessary evil. Because it points out the things that you should work on. The society sees you that you should work on. Whether you don't wear enough deodorant, you don't brush your teeth, your hygiene is horrible, you need a haircut, you need to wash your hair. Certain things of this magnitude helps shape you into the person you are today. But I digress. I always go back to self-deprecating humor because I was never comfortable with myself as a human being. So we go on to the job. I've had multiple jobs in my time, just like you. And once again, when the big boss or your supervisor would pay me a compliment, I didn't know how to take it. I would always roll back into, oh yeah, whatever, I didn't do the job that well. Somebody else did it better than me. You know, I don't deserve this adulation or anything of the sort. And that hindered me during my years working. And now, and only now, I can take credit for my work. I'm proud of my work. I'm proud of what I've done on my job. And when the higher-ups, you know, bonus me or tell me I'm doing a great job or send me to another location, I take it all in stride and I say thank you. 
and maybe I humble brag a little bit, but I think I deserve it. I think I can look in a mirror at my second life and acknowledge the things that I've done well. Now, will the, self, will the self-deprecating thing continue to grow? Uh, it may, but it's all a learning process. And I think self-deprecating humor to me isn't really, isn't a necessary evil. Is it really warranted? Is it really needed anymore? So my message to all of you those who listen out there, you know, take a compliment. You know, take that thank you. You know, take that W, as the kids would say. Because self deprecating humor is not flattering. It's not funny. It's not attractive. You know, it's. I don't really have a word for it. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It's not bedong. It's just. I don't believe that. Your insecurities need to shine through when it comes to someone acknowledging who you are as a person. Once again, whether it be in a relationship, whether it be building to a relationship, whether it be just a common flattery about oneself. You know, a simple thank you goes a long way. And it's okay to be insecure. It's okay to have those insecurities because we all have them. No such thing as a perfect person, not even close. If someone says they're perfect, they're lying to you. But I digress. The moral to this is you're insecure, it's no problem. You know, as long as you work through it, as long as you get past it, as long as you evolve over it, insecurities lead you down a wrong path. But if someone takes the time out of their day to praise you, embrace it. Even if you don't believe it, trust me. I know plenty of times where I've had tons of compliments and I don't believe it, but... It all goes back to saying thank you and appreciating the time somebody takes to acknowledge something about you, something very little about you, something good about you. And I think with the Walk Racy experience and how far we've become, how much we've evolved over the years, and how we have listeners all over the world, a clothing line, everything of the sort that I've talked so much about, and that I still do this show every single week for you. No matter if I talk about the most silliest of things, no matter how preachy I may sound, no matter how stuffy I sound at this moment, go figure. But the message is still the same. Self-deprecating humor, I'll still do it. I won't lie. That's just who I am. But I think I can do less and less of it. Because the all famous line, as I get older, life gets shorter, your memories get longer. You want to be remembered as a good person. You want to be remembered as doing something well. Making something of yourself, making a difference in the world, whether it be a small thing or a big thing. But trust me, in the end, take a compliment because it means something, no matter who gives it to you. And of course, you can always reach out to us under slackingmajestically01 at yahoo.com. And of course, you can find us on all the free apps below, Stitcher, Deezer, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everything in between. Please be sure to subscribe, to like, to comment, to tell everybody about the Walker AC experience. We are just a microcosm in the world of podcast, but we reach and we touch and we do everything in between, folks. Giggity. Have a good night. This has been a Walker AC experience. I have been Adrian. You've been my friends, my family, my loved ones, my enemies, my compadres. And until next week.